All right, so tomorrow actually marks eight weeks of exclusively working out from home, and it also marks eight weeks since I've got a haircut, but we're not here to talk about that. I wanna talk about the difference that I've found from working out at home versus working out at the gym, the pros, the cons, what's good, what's bad, and all that, so you can kinda of see if you actually need the gym or if working out at home is better, or maybe working out at home is not ideal for you, so you wanna to go to the gym. So with that said, let's get right into it. This is Gabe with gameswithgabe.com and welcome back to another episode of the Games with Gabe podcast and today we're talking about working out at home versus working out at the gym and I originally started working out at home a couple months ago because we had our second daughter and I was going to be home to help my wife recover. She had abdominal surgery with a c-section and not to mention just you know growing an entire human and having to recover from that so I was going to be home to help her and I was like you know I should probably still like you know do workouts and stuff because it's good for you and keep my strength up when I'm not going to be at the gym and I've discovered that you can get a lot done and build strength and build muscle without a ton of weights even though I have an entire squat rack and barbell set with plates in this room right here we just don't really have the space for it in this um, I mean sizable but not sizable enough apartment and a second floor but my point is is I was able to get a lot done with just 25 pound dumbbells 30 pound dumbbells and a door frame pull up bar. That's it, very simple. I have a floor that you can do a lot with just a floor too. And so I kinda wanna do a little bit of comparison between home workouts and gym workouts. Now, first off with the gym workouts, it's really awesome because there's so much equipment. There's so many options. There's so many different things you can use and get a really good workout in. You got all kinds of machines. Of course, you got the dumbbells. Of course, you got the barbells. You got benches. You got all kinds of stuff that you can have a really good workout with. And over time, you can do like six weeks of one exercise and kind of switch it to another exercise after like six weeks and kind of rotate through and keep building strength while keeping things interesting. And that's a really cool thing you could do with a gym. However, on like the home workout side, you pretty much have what you got and you gotta make it work, right? So another thing I was thinking about is like with the gym, it's a very low upfront cost. Even if you have like the enrollment fees and a monthly fee and all this other kind of fees, right? You're thinking about like anywhere between 10 and 50 bucks a month on average for really good gyms to get access to all that equipment. Like it is very, very low cost when you think about all that goes into getting the space for it, getting the equipment for the gym, getting the staff to help you with the gym, like all this stuff, and you only have to pay a little bit to get access to it. It's pretty cool. Um, and then another thing a lot of people like about the gym is it's a very motivating environment. You see other people working out that are super jacked or just really getting started and they're motivated, they're going, they're showing up every day. There, There's a lot of very high motivational energy at the gym, which is why a lot of people like it because you kind of absorb that a little bit. You kind of draw it into your own body because you're already there with those other people trying to make themselves better and stronger and get in better shape. And it's really cool. And that's one of the biggest things I liked about it, especially when I was a manager at a gym, I'd see all these people just like putting in work every day or every other day or how often they did it. And just, it was really cool to see some transformations over time. I was only there for about seven, eight months or so, but you can see like people just start working out and then a few months later, they look different, right? They look leaner, they look stronger. And then a few months after that, you can see it even better. And it's like, it's really, really cool to see. So a highly motivating environment is a big plus for the gym. And another thing is it is a little bit easier to make progress in terms of building muscle, mainly because of the options out there. And that's just my personal experience. It is a little bit tougher if you only have like one set of dumbbells that's pretty light, but you can still absolutely make things happen with the home workout. So some of the cons though is it does take up time. Like with a home workout, you just, you know, you're already there, right? But you have to get up and get your gym bag ready or at least just get a water bottle. That's pretty straightforward. You get in the gym clothes, you have to get to the gym. There's one point in my life where I was actually taking a bus 45 minutes over to the next town over. I actually have videos on this, but I think I, I think I took those ones down. But anyways, I take a bus ride to the next town over to go to the actual good gym 
then work out for 45 minutes to an hour, and then take another 45 minute bus ride back. Now, obviously, my life has drastically changed since back then. Now I have a whole family and a very, very time intensive job. And fortunately, I live pretty close to my job, so that's not so bad. But adding that on top of that, even if the gym is like 10 minutes away, it's all that time invested. Like, it does take a bit to do all of that. So if you get into a really good groove with it and you kind of get a gym that's close enough to your work so you can kind of go there before you go back home or close enough to home where you can go home, kind of eat something real quick, like something light, and then go to the gym and then work out there and then come back a few days a week, it's not so bad, but it does take some time. And then another thing is like just that commute in general, like sometimes you can actually use it to your advantage though, where maybe I should put this in like the pros category, but you can use that commute time to kind of get your mind right. If you're coming from work, kind of reset a little bit, maybe listen to a podcast or some really music that amps you up. But a lot of times it just takes that extra travel time to get to the gym so you can actually get the workout. And then you have to commute all the way home, which again, it depends on the distance and travel. And sometimes gyms aren't super close, but really depends on the situation. But I, I put that as kind of a con because time is so valuable. And I personally don't have a ton of it that to just kind of waste on driving around. Now, another thing that's kind of frustrating with the gym is waiting for equipment. Not a huge fan of going in, getting ready to go, gonna do some bench press or pull-ups or whatever, and the cable station where the pull-up bar is is taken by like four people and people are waiting in line and you have to wait for them. And then you're the guy that's just like, gonna do pull-ups when people are trying to do cable flies and I'm just like it's kind of a pain or like bench press a lot of gyms only have one maybe two and they have like 38 people that want to bench press that day that you want to go so never really do chest day on Monday or probably even do a chest day at all just do like a push day that's just my opinion though and that is a frustration at the gym which you really don't get at home now in terms of home workouts I've been really liking them lately and a big part of that is there is zero commute, absolutely zero. Like I'm already gonna go home and then I just simply pick up my dumbbells and I could work out anywhere, except that I have a 22 month old daughter and a newborn and my wife and my dog. So I actually have a little landing at the top of the stairs where there's a gate for safety, like so no one can kind of just go down the stairs as they please and then it's just like a little entryway. And if, if you see my workout videos recently, you've already seen that little landing. It's pretty sweet where I can just work out in that area and I'm not having to worry about like doing some kind of row and knocking my dog in the head or having my daughter come up behind me or anything like that. It's like a, <clears throat> a little gated area, a little gated community of one. It's kind of sweet. So, I mean, maybe you don't have that exact same setup. However, like if you're doing an at-home workout, you can do it in a room or in the kitchen, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want and it's pretty cool because you're already home. Uh, another thing is, I guess this depends, but there's no random spectators. Like you know who's gonna be watching you work out, which is a super plus for me because I know that if I'm working out, my daughter's gonna see me, she's gonna try to do some squats, whether I'm doing, <laughs> whether I'm doing leg day, push day, pull day, doesn't seem to matter. If I'm doing a workout, she's gonna start doing squats randomly and she has this big smile on her face and it's super, super cool to see. And then it's like, it's just really cool. But like at the gym, a lot of times you'd have people just kind of like, you could see them looking at you and it doesn't really matter why they are. You could just, you can sense it and it's just kind of sometimes uncomfortable. Like for me personally, I don't really care because I even pull out a camera when I'm at the gym. I'm that guy. I don't care. I have no shame in terms of the gym. Obviously, I try to be respectful of my camera, but I just I just don't care. But I know a lot of people do care about stuff like that. They're already just not really super comfortable being in a busy public place, let alone like catching someone looking at you. It's just, it can be uncomfortable. I totally get that. There's definitely a time in my life where I just, I like have my hood up and I'm just like, I'm gonna do my workout and go. Like, that's it. But. Nowadays, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little different, you know. So, another thing is, at home there are very minimal distractions. At times, so by comparison to the gym, there's all this kind of stuff going on. People talking to me, like, just it's it's a cool environment. Again, very motivating, right? You see a lot of people just putting in the work, but at the same time, 
when I was, especially when I was a manager at the gym, so this is a little bit of a different case. I find myself talking to people too much or even more recently at the gym I'm at now in a different state altogether, different section of the country. I don't know anyone. And yet I would still find myself having conversations and then a 30 minute workout turns into like a 45 minute gym session or maybe even a little bit longer because I'm chilling and chatting instead of doing a workout. So that's kind of distracting. But at home, even if I, I, I was legit, no joke, cooking dinner and working out. So I'd set a cook timer. I'd do a couple sets, go back, make sure that the food's not burning itself, which it didn't. It came out absolutely perfect. Had some beef lo mein. It, it was a frozen meal, but it came out really good on the stove top. But anyways, the point is like set a cook timer. You work out, do a couple sets. Like I just said, kind of repeat myself, go back, make sure it's good. Go back, do a couple of sets, serve it up, do another set. Like, even though that sounds distracting, like it doesn't matter because you're still doing what you got to do and you can still work out versus like at the gym, you, you just have that time, but it's like other people can kind of distract you. I may or may not make sense with that, but with at home, like you control the distractions versus other people kind of, you know, distracting you, if that makes any sense. So with that said, another option and another plus is like I was mentioning before, it's like inspiring my family. Like I think if that I want other people to work out, then I should also be the one working out, right? I should be the one setting the example for not, not just my family, but the half the reason I post all the videos that I do and write my daily email and do all this stuff is so I can spy, inspire other people to work out as well. Because I think it's, I'm just hooked on it. I love doing it. I love lifting weights. I love eating, well, all kinds of foods, but like controlling my calories. That's my strategy. That's how I've been doing it for a long time and it's been working out really, really well. So I want to show that and, and constantly do that and live by that. And it's so cool when I was seeing my daughter coming up and doing some squats on the other side of that safety gate, just because I'm doing that. And then like talking to my wife a little bit about working out and we've been going on more walks recently and it's just been a really nice time. And it's cool because if I'm not doing it, everyone else can be a lot less likely to do it. And I'm not saying like, I'm the only one who can make a decision or anything, but what I'm saying is like, it's inspiring. If you see someone doing something consistently, you're gonna probably be more likely to do the thing. So that's what I'm talking about. It's like, it's really cool because it's shown, like it's shown that the more often, not more often, but like the more consistent I am when working out, the better it is for everyone. And also I feel better, so I'm better to be around and everything's just overall better. So you know, like hit the gym or hit it at home workout and everything will be better because of it. At least that's just my incredibly biased opinion. Now, in terms of the cons, we've kind of already gone over this, but the equipment is quite limited. Like you only got what you got and you don't got any more unless you go buy some more and then we're jacking up the price, right? Because with gym stuff, like, yeah, sure, you can put on a credit card or do financing or whatever it is, but you're still fronting that cash or paying that amount of cash which over time is a good investment. Like I'm not gonna have to buy another barbell set for a very long time. It was $700. However, those $700 could last years versus like 50 bucks a month at a gym ends up being 600 a year, two years, 1200. It definitely pays for itself over time to buy your own stuff. And the squat rack that I have, which is, I would not put that back together again because it's a hundred dollar squat rack and kind of warped a little bit. But if I have to buy one of those every year and maybe like a couple other odds and ends, maybe a couple more weight plates, it would still be less than two years of a gym membership, not to mention like annual fees and all that stuff. So it is a good way to go. And like, but my point is like, you only have what you have. And then I kind of went off on a, a little bit of a tangent with the pricing stuff. But in terms of that, like it's kind of a con unless you keep buying more stuff. That's my point. Uh, and then kind of tying into that is higher upfront costs. So if you're to do what I did and buy a hundred dollar squat rack and the $700 barbell set, you're looking at 800 bucks plus like an adjustable bench. If you want to get a couple dumbbells, especially the adjustable ones are like $600 a set or something crazy like that. Maybe I'm looking at too expensive ones. I'm not sure. But the point is you have to pay that upfront versus like with the gym, you kind of pay over time to access everything. And again, yeah, sure, you can do financing, but that's not the point. Like it is still higher upfront costs. 
And then if you're doing financing interest, unless you get no interest, that adds up quite a bit, especially on the type of purchase that gym equipment is. So the last thing I wanna say on this is the semi conda at home workouts is unless you figure out how to do at home workouts properly, which takes a little bit of experimentation and learning and studying and something I'm doing myself as well because I don't really plan on going back to the gym anytime soon because it's just been such a good experience over the last couple months that it does take a different approach to make progress, especially if you're doing body weight workouts, like that's a whole different game than loading up a bench press and loading up a squat rack. It's different. So you have to train a little bit differently and figure out how to stimulate the muscle to grow and how to stimulate your joints to get stronger and do all this stuff a little bit differently than at the gym. But if you can do that, it actually turns into a pro because then you're expanding your mind, expanding your thinking and realizing that the only limits you have is what you set on yourself. It's, it's really interesting. So with that said, either way, the goal is to just hit the weights either way, even if it's body weight, even if it's dumbbells, even if it's barbells, even if it's, it doesn't matter. The point is get stronger, push harder than you did before, keep getting better and better, improving your technique, making sure everything feels right and getting better at it and always just like I always say track everything like track your workouts record your workouts you can see where you're at track all your food do all this stuff you can absolutely make as much progress as you want of course in due time so that's all I have for today's episode hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you found it helpful hopefully you could uh sit through these ramblings in my 90 mile per hour brain even though it's currently 10 28 p.m and i gotta post this video before midnight otherwise i missed my upload schedule on week two so i got some editing to do thanks so much for watching gameswithgabe.com for online programs and my daily newsletter and i will talk to you next time